This is the first in a series of videos showing you how to do the problems on the Math Placement Exam 2 from Texas A&M. So if I know you're going to Texas A&M, you're probably going to have to take a math, math placement test. The MPE2 or MPE2 is probably for the non-STEM majors. If I have enough demand for the MPE1, I'll do uh, videos on that. And there is a lot of overlap between the two tests. So you may think it's horrible. They don't let you use a calculator or any kind of notes or cheat sheet. But most of this stuff you know already. So here's a copy of the test. I'll send a copy of the test, and or the sample test, and the answers to everybody that I know about. It's 34 problems, and you get 90 minutes to do it. It's uh, online, and I think you get several chances to take it, or at least two chances to take it. So it's doable, and the way I'll run these videos is I'll show you how to do the problem quickly. If there's any theory behind doing the problem, I'll cover that. I'll show you how to do it on the calculator, which doesn't really apply for taking the test. And then if there's something interesting to it, I call it down the rabbit hole. I'll show you more stuff. So if you want to stop right at how to do it in the theory, that's fine. So for this first problem, rationalize the denominator. So we have this expression, and for various reasons, we'll, which we'll talk about in Down the Rabbit Hole, it's supposed to be bad math manners to have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. So rationalizing it is getting rid of that uh, radical in the denominator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply by 1. So if I multiply a fraction by 1, I'm not really changing anything. But I'm going to carefully choose the 1. So I'm going to put the uh, irrational conjugate of 3 plus the square root of 2, which is 3 minus the square root of 2, divided by itself. So this fraction is just 1. So I'm not really changing the fraction. I'm not going to distribute that 14 yet. So in the numerator, I get this. And then 3 times 3 is 9. And then square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 is negative 2. And you may be thinking, well, what happened to the middle term? Well, this is called a difference of two squares. It always factors to this, a plus b times a minus b. And it goes both ways. So if you do a plus b times a minus b, you get, you distribute to the difference of two perfect, perfect squares. I'm not going to do it. You can, if you can distribute it out yourself, you'll see that the two middle terms cancel out, or the middle term cancels out. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So now you can see the wisdom of not distributing the 14 yet. So I can cancel that to just a 2. And then distributing the 2 inside, I get 6 minus 2 square roots of 2. And if we go check the answer, 6 minus 2 square roots of 2. I could do that in the calculator as well. If you have the CAS version of the calculator, the calculator will rationalize the denominator for you. Now, this is not exactly what we got. They have some bizarre rule. But if we distribute the negative 2 back in, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. And negative 2 times positive square root of 2 is minus 2 square root of 2. So we got the same thing there. And then going a little bit deeper, OK, this may or may not show up on your placement test. But instead of a radical in the denominator, I've got a complex number in the denominator. So my strategy is going to be to multiply by 1 again to get rid of that complex number in the denominator. Now I'm going to multiply by the complex conjugate divided by itself. 
So here this is going to be 3 times 2 minus 3i. And now we're going to use the difference of two perfect squares working in reverse. 2 times 2 is 4. And then 3 times 3 is 9. And that'd be negative 9, but i squared is a negative 1. So this is plus 9. So we're not going to be able to divide out anything. So this, my denominator is going to be 13. And this is going to be 6 minus 9i. And then there's one more little wrinkle. The traditional way to write complex numbers is the real part a plus b times i. So the traditional way to write this is 6 over 13 minus 9 thirteenths times i. Now, you may wonder, now we're going down the rabbit hole, why is it traditional to rationalize denominators? <clears throat> well, it goes back to before people had calculators and computers. When I was in high school, if I needed a square root, I would go to the back of my book, and there were appendices that looked like this. There were trig tables and cube root tables and things like that. But basically, 1 divided by the square root of 2, if I'm going to go to the table and get this to four decimal place approximation of the square root of 2, this is a really hard long division problem. If I rationalize the denominator by multiplying by 1 in the form of square root of 2 over square root of 2, I get this fraction, which gives me this long division problem, which is far easier. How many times will 2 go into 1? Well, 0. How many times will 2 go into 14? 7. So this is a subtraction step, so I'm left with 1, 4, 2. How many times will 2 go into 1? 0. Into 14. 14. Subtract. How many times will 2 go into 2? So if we go to the calculator and we do 1 divided by the square root of 2, put in a decimal point to ask for an approximation, to four decimal places, that's what you get. And if you do the square root of 2 divided by 2, you get exactly the same decimal. So those are exactly the same number. So in my opinion, it's really archaic to rationalize denominators. And that concludes this first video.